Hello, everybody. Hey, we're going to take a look at the WL Toys 144001, the brushless version that I'm working on. I've got three ESCs we're going to take a look at. The little servo that I stuck in there the other day that was an exact drop in, and it was kind of unknown whether that thing was going to perform well or not. It does real good. It does good on 5 and 5.8 volts. So we'll, we'll go over that in a few minutes. And I've got the uh, radio link radio on this car right now. And the little diagram here, I was doing some measurements on the battery box. So what I'm going to do, it runs on six triple A's. No, I'm going to change that out and I'm going to put three 18650s. And if you're not familiar with those, they're a rechargeable lithium ion battery. Most of your lithium ion battery packs that are a two cell pack, that's what's inside them is an 18650. So let's just go ahead and get this thing started and I'll explain more as I go. I felt like I needed to give you guys something. The 60 amp ESC came in, but it's a little big. But I want to show you something. We were worried about, or I was worried about, the little um, servo that actually fits into this car, direct fit. I was kind of worried that it wouldn't have enough power. Now, this is a 5.8 volt ESC. So I'm going to show you something real quick. Now I'm using the uh, Radio Link transmitter. And this is it. Oh, by the way, I decided to try something different. This is actually a floor mat. Um, and I, I like all the little grooves in here because if you lose a um, screw, you drop a screw or something, it may be, I don't know, I'm just trying it out, but maybe it won't take off and uh, over to the next county or something like that. This is a 36, oops, 24 by 36 doormat for your front door. And so if anybody... Uh, you can scan that if you get your phone out and have a barcode scanner. It'll show you what it is. It was, I don't know, $11 maybe, something like that. So anyway, the 60 amp ESC won't fit in here. And I do have the gyro on here. But it's not mounted anywhere. But even, even sitting on this mat, check out the... Now that, that's at 5.8 volts. I'll, I'm going to do it. The other ESC only has uh, 5 volts on the BEC. That is smoking. And here's the gyro. So, and that's what the, the gyro said at 50%. And of course, it won't be moving that fast when it's actually mounted on the car, you know, so... But let me uh, let me show you what it does on a five volt BEC. This is the little 35 amper that I had in the. Uh, it's got the wrong size connectors on it. But what I'm actually going to do right now, I think with this particular uh, 2845 motor, I don't think I need any more than the 35 amps. Um, but these connectors don't work, so I'm going to change these out. And if any, if you've never changed any of these, that's what I'm going to do next. Kind of give you some kind of an idea how that works. And I'll I'll salvage these so they can be used on something else. Now that's what the five volt BEC, and that's on carpet. And I've got the endpoint set. This thing will actually turn way further than uh, the, the car had the physical ability to. So it was just loading up the servo. And this radio does have endpoint adjusts on it. And it has where you can slow down the responsiveness in the middle of the travel. And you can change the contours on it. It's pretty, pretty cool radio. I don't know what all it's, um, the tunability is on that. But it's super duper flexible. So... Let me uh, go out, 
my soldering stations in the, in the shop. So uh, I'm going to take this apart and I'll show you what we're going to do with these connectors. I want to show you this before I show you that. How about that? This is another ESC that I picked up. It's supposed to be 120 amps. Uh, don't know. It's got a programming switch on the switch and then I, I, find, I found a menu for it. It didn't have any uh, connectors on it. I hadn't put heat shrink on these yet but it's gonna and it's even got a little cap pack kind of I don't know maybe that's um, false hope but since it did have a cap pack with it I thought maybe just maybe it was worth the try and it was inexpensive. I actually got that at walmart.com so this one's got the wrong size on here. So what we're going to do is take these off and I've got a, um, an assortment of connectors that some of which are the correct size. And I'm going to save these for some other project. So all we're going to do now, and this is a, a razor blade, so be very careful. I know you're not supposed to cut toward you, so I'll try to try to not do that. Just want to get this thing cut loose, and I'm not going to go. I'm not going to do all three of them on camera, but I will do one. Show you. I'm not saying this is a good process. Not saying it's the only process. It's just the way I do it. There's a good way, a bad way, a right way wrong way and I've heard that for a long time and I have found there are a lot of degrees in between those levels. So we've got this pull loose. Now this is my little goofy way to do it if I can get the camera turned over here. I put these on an Allen wrench so that I can heat them up without heating my hand up. Now you could drill a hole in a piece of wood. There's That's where I'm talking about the different ways to do this. This is certainly not the only way but this way works now that's not in focus let me okay now that I have it framed a little better and in focus just put the uh, soldering iron on here heat this up and that should uh, that wire will pull right out of there and that's it I'm going to pull the other three out, then I'll show you the reverse process. I forgot to mention, I, uh, I find an Allen wrench that just barely accommodates whatever the connector is that I'm using. And um, these connectors are larger, so put a larger Allen wrench in there. Reverse of the first process, and we're going to put heat shrink on these, but... Uh, the heat shrink can go on later because it uh, it's large enough to slip over the, the whole assembly. And these wires are going to be inside. Now what I do, again, this is just my little method. Put a little dab of soldering paste inside there. A little 60-40 solder. It's hard to do this around the camera. Put that in the end of the connector just to get it uh, tinned. You'll see it flash over, maybe make a little bubble there. And then I take the uh, the end of the wire, get it ready. Okay, so we're going to heat this up again till it till you see the solder. It'll kind of flash over silver. Stick that down in there. Take the heat off. Let it uh, cool a little bit. Once it cools a little bit, it'll kind of turn... It'll lose some of the shimmer. Once it loses that shimmer, then the, uh, the solder is set and ready to go. Let it hang from there or whatever. That's it. When I get the other three done, I'll show you what the heat sink's for. This paper is pretty crinkly, so I'll try not to move it much. This is just a big assortment package of uh, all different sizes. I've got some stuff there that's actually big enough to do battery packs with and what have you. We don't necessarily need this to color match because we can see obviously the colors of the wires. 
I know a lot of you have used heat shrink tubing before, but for the few that haven't, uh, or, or maybe the many that haven't, you just slide that over, throw a little heat on it. I prefer to use a heat gun. You don't have to. I've done it with a cigarette lighter before and eh, I wasn't all that crazy about my results. All right, and this is something that I find interesting. Now this is a 35 amp, this is a 60 amp, and this is supposed to be a 120. This one, this is the, in theory, this is the 60 amp. And it will not fit in this little notch. Okay. And of course the 35 will. But this is supposed to be a 120. And it actually it actually fits down in that little groove just fine. So is this really a 120? I don't know. But Right now, I'm not going to find out. Right now, I'm going to go with this little 35. By the way, this uh, this one also has a 5-volt BEC. This one has a 5-volt BEC, and this one has a 5.8-volt BEC. So this one and the blue one, that supposedly 120, those are going to be for some future project unknown to me at this time. I've got everything in there now and that's the battery that I used. It's a 2S that I used on the uh, brushed car. But I'm going to say from, uh, let me turn the radio on, turn the car on. I'm not real crazy about this switch. It doesn't have any dust protection. So I will probably no matter what, put a different switch on there. You can see the gyro doing its little thing. I don't think this is going to be, at least on 2S, as fast as the other car, judging by the, uh, the wheels. They don't they don't spin up uh, nearly as fast as the 2s car did, uh, the brushed 2s car. So I'll uh, when it quits raining, I've got to go tomorrow. For those of you that don't know, I live in Colorado. Uh, I've got to go to Wyoming tomorrow. I uh, will be back in theory on Wednesday, and if we uh, have better weather, we should. We usually don't get rain several days in a row. I'll do a test. A speed test on this, take it out, run it a little bit, see what kind of temperatures we get on this 35 amp ESC, uh, do some checking on the uh, gyro. This little controller, one of the things I'm going to do on this, this thing uses two buckets full of uh, AA batteries, uses six of them, but this battery tray will come out and for those of you that are familiar with 18650 lithium ion batteries, I purchased a three cell lithium ion tray. It's just like this for the double A's, except it holds uh, 18650s. They're rechargeable and I'm gonna I'm gonna run it on there. This has a voltage monitor on top, but I will tell you it's very easy to leave this thing turned on which I already killed one set of uh, AA batteries. So that would get kind of expensive. Now, I'll also tell you, it uses a JST connector. So you any two-cell LiPo you can put in there. I just happen to be a fan of 18650s, and I just happen to have a bucket load of them. So I'll, um, I'll show you what I'm going to do with that, how I'm going to put the other uh, battery tray in there and what that's going to look like. But you can see, maybe right now, this is at 8.8 uh, .8 volts. And I just put the batteries in there a short time ago. 
So it's not uh, delicate on batteries in the least. So I think the 18650s are going to be a better option. And with all of these other ESCs, I don't know. I'll come up with something for these. I'm, I may try this one on this car. I'm going to see what this ESC does. And I, I may just give this one a shot on this car, see what kind of temps I get with it. But that's what I got coming up in the future. If you want to see that, uh, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, and you won't miss out on that. Other than that, that's all I've got for today. So thanks, everybody, for uh, hanging in there. I appreciate it, and I'll catch you guys down the road.